Let me take the next uh, eight minutes and try to share with you the experience that we had at AP Malmersk, uh, moving from, from traditional uh, budgeting to kind of a rolling forecast uh, over the last uh, 10 years with, uh, with the ups and downs. Uh, but first, let me uh, introduce a bit uh, the company so you understand where I um, so on the next slide, you will see kind of the uh, the, the global network that uh, that Maersk has. So uh, most of you probably know Maersk uh, from the uh, container ships uh, that we have. Uh, we are actually an uh, integrated uh, logistic provider in more than uh, than 100 countries across the world. And as you can see from the network. Uh, you can imagine, uh, as, as kind of Larissa did uh, with her example of the sailing boat, that there will be uh, events that, that require us to, to change uh, the network. So we have to be, uh, from, from the nature of our business, quite uh, dynamic uh, around this. Yeah. Um, to start off um, with, uh, with the next page, uh, I would like to um, uh, kind of give to you the, the, the journey that we went through. Um, before we started with the, uh, the rolling forecast, we had a kind of a de facto uh, planning process, uh, as, as we, uh, uh, as I think you will recognize from from a lot of you in, in your own company. So we had a detailed budget uh, by calendar year. We had kind of a, a strategic uh, uh, capital allocation for a five-year plan, and we had kind of multiple revisions of our our, 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 our budget. Uh, which was quite uh, resource intensive and, and also took a long time to prepare. Then we had monthly reviews against that budget, uh, but it was all limited on uh, on, on, the, on the calendar year. Right? Um, some of the shortcomings uh, of, of that uh, are inherent, right? So I think one of the most important shortcomings uh, of, of that process uh, is, is that uh, you're actually trying to mix several things into one uh, number if you make a budget. You're trying to create uh, or mix, uh, you know, an ambitious target setting uh, number that you want to inspire people to to outperform. Uh, at the same time, you want to, uh, you're mixing it with a realistic uh, forecast that you want to have for your capital allocation, for your resource allocation. Um, so tr trying to mix that, you you will uh, you will not uh, get uh, any of those uh, those things. Uh, secondly, you get also a very slow adaption to, to market conditions because you're only looking uh, several months uh, months ahead and, and you kind of keep measuring yourself uh, according to the same, uh, same budget. Uh, as I mentioned, it's also uh, quite resource demanding to, uh, to do kind of a detailed uh, bottom-up uh, process and, and give people uh, the, you know, their, their budgets. Um, the, the, the next thing is also it's, it's very inconsistent visibility. Uh, because you're only looking at a calendar year, so so your 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 horizon of where you're looking forward to is is decreasing uh, as as you go by, and then you could miss you know uh, very important trends that you're not seeing uh, that will would allow you to kind of uh, change your company and, and make uh, make different decisions. Yeah? Our next uh, speaker, Stefan, will will uh, will talk about that more as well. Um, and then, yeah, you're missing kind of not, not enough structure to to make these uh, these investment decisions. Um, if we go to the to the next page, um, then then I can explain to you uh, what we were actually solving for. Um, so uh, together with uh, Beyond Budgeting, uh, we kind of looked at our existing process and what we wanted to really achieve uh, with, with our new uh, new process. Um, so we wanted to have a, a better visibility, so a longer forward-looking period to be able to identify trends uh, and, and act on, on those trends. Huh? Uh, we wanted to be agile so that we could, when we recognize trends, that we could actually uh, change uh, um, our, our company and, and, uh, and, and make the changes necessary to, to Im improve our performance. We wanted to still have some control uh, with, with balanced scorecard uh, driven process to, to be able to, to measure uh, the performance of our people and, and reward them. And at the same time, we also wanted to make it more simple uh, to, to remove kind of unnecessary details and, and, and effort that we, we had. So those were the, uh, the, the things we set out. And then uh, we, we worked on, on a process uh, uh, inspired by uh, the Beyond Budgeting Group on, on designing that new performance process. I will, design, I will focus on, on kind of the, the financial forecasting process uh, more. Uh, the other speakers will, will focus a bit on, on other areas, right? But it goes throughout your company, of course. 
Um, on the next page, you'll see kind of the process that we, we ended up with. Uh, this is the, the financial forecasting process where, where we had. So we started off with uh, with kind of the process on a quarterly basis. We do a five quarter forecast. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have micro assumptions to ensure that everybody uh, starts off with the same uh, assumptions uh, across the different uh, businesses. We, uh, we uh, then have a, a, an internal forecasting process. Uh, we then consolidate the financials. Uh, we create kind of management views on, on those financials, which I, I think is important to make sure that we are all looking at uh, the same numbers with, uh, with the same uh, uh, um, uh, assumptions uh, baked in there. Uh, then we have these quarterly reviews uh, where we then look at uh, and, and, uh, and review um, the performance uh, compared to uh, where we where we thought that we we wanted to be and and the changes that that uh, are occurred in the forecast, uh, we then take uh, kind of action items based on that uh, and and. Uh, Contrary to a budgeting process, the, you won't go back and change the rolling forecast. You, you will just implement the, the changes uh, in, into the next one. Yeah. Um, so to move to the next page, uh, there are some uh, kind of success criteria to, to uh, doing um, doing the, uh, the, the, the implementing it successfully. Um, so some of the success criteria um, on the next page, you can see that that there really has to be a need um, to to make a change um, uh, based on on kind of uh, you know your company uh, where you are um, <clears throat> either to, through a kind of an economic crisis or or a competitive pressure um, or a change in macro environments. For us, it was very clearly in in uh, in 2010 after the global financial crisis that. You know, created so many market swings in our, in our environment that that we had we, our current process uh, or our de facto process was not uh, not working anymore. Yeah, if you go to the next page, I, I listed some of these key uh, uh, success criteria. So um, it's great if you have a need to to make a change. Uh, otherwise, it's very important to identify, you know, what what the benefits uh, could be. Right? Like I said, <clears throat> you know, the global financial crisis was an accelerator for us. Uh, but what we see now with COVID uh, in the last year uh, could also be uh, very clearly a an, an catalyst for, for your change, right? Then uh, it's, it's super important to have executive sponsorship and, and management buy-in uh, because it's not just only a kind of a, a process or a forecasting process change. It's, it's also a mindset change, right? To, to get away from having one fixed number and, and having that as the truth for, 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 for 12 months, but allowing for the company to, to change the number for uh, uh, empowering the people that they, uh, they use, uh, you know, their best uh, insight that they have to uh, set up the company for success in the best possible way. So it's, it's, a, it's a mindset change that the management has to have buy-in. And over the 10 years, we've seen kind of also our buy-in in, in this kind of uh, uh, increase and decrease uh, based on kind of management changes. Yeah. Um, it, it, it also uh, requires you to, to decentralize, to, to make, uh, to allow for better decision making uh, where, where people have more insight on, on this, right? Um, and it, it helps if your company is in, in a volatile market or, or business, uh, because that, that actually uh, creates kind of a higher need uh, um, for having a flexible process. If we go to the next uh, page, um so so what what have you seen as the benefits so we've seen kind of this increased visibility by constantly having a, a, a horizon of five quarters and it depends on your business what what makes sense if it's five quarters seven quarters uh, depends on, on how the speed of how quickly you can change your business we can see that we have also improved our performance discussion uh, when i say that 30 70 i mean we only backward looking 30 percent of the time and then forward looking percent 70 percent because that's the actual results you can impact that's that's the future you can define and then we've we've come become better at the kind of uh, decision making and, and acting on on trends as, as we see them happening yeah we also set up uh, better targets uh, based on on our, our on our forecasting process, and then are allowed uh, can also allocate our uh, capital uh, in in a much better way uh, that allows for flexibility and and changes. Um, yeah. And then I think overall people will feel uh, an increased uh, amount of autonomy and ownership instead of uh, having fixed budgets that uh, that have uh, a lot of credibility. 
So this is what I wanted to share with you on, on, on the journey that we went through. 